Hey, so this is my quick review of the GeekPi 5 inch capacitive touchscreen. It's a very responsive display and it's very easy to set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys my setup here. I know it's really messy, but I wanted to share it with you guys. So essentially, all it is is the Raspbian OS installed into my Raspberry Pi 0W here. And I connected both the Pi and the display via HDMI and USB. With USB, I'm using USB OTG. And make sure they're connected to each other. If you connect the display, to a wall outlet as a source of power, it won't actually work with the touchscreen. So make sure you guys do both. Uh, for the display itself, again, it's really responsive. I could just go ahead and show you guys a little bit of how it tracks my finger here. So no latency or anything whatsoever. And yeah, all in all, let me just go ahead and let that focus here. All in all, it's a really high quality display. And of course you can use multiple fingers at once, if you connect it to your Mac for example, which I did, I was able to use multiple fingers and see how everything was working all together, so yeah, I recommend it and just wanted to share that with you guys. Thank you. The motherboard is arguably a PC's most important component. Nothing else works without it, and it decides what upgrades you can make in the future. Here's what you need to know before you buy. You'll first need to pick a form factor. ATX motherboards like this one are common, as is micro ATX, which cuts off a few inches and loses some expansion card slots. If you're not sure what motherboard fits in your case, you can always find out by measuring what's already inside and comparing it to specifications online. We recommend buying an ATX board if it will fit. The added expansion slots can be useful. Once you've picked a form factor, you'll need to select a processor socket. This isn't too difficult since it depends entirely on the processor you want to buy. Each processor fits in a certain socket, so of course you'll need to buy a compatible motherboard. Next, take a look at RAM. We recommend buying a motherboard that can accommodate at least 16 gigabytes, even if you don't plan to buy that much initially. Also, look for a board that offers four or more memory slots. That means you can install two RAM modules initially and you'll have room left over for memory upgrades in the future. Next, turn your attention to the PCI slots. If you plan to use the computer for games, you'll want to have at least one full speed PCI Express x 16 slot. And you'll need multiples of those if you want to connect multiple cards. Motherboards also offer standard PCI slots and smaller PCI Express slots for other cards like sound cards, Wi-Fi adapters, and other connectivity expansions. The need for expansion is less if you buy a motherboard with features already built in. Most include some form of onboard audio that's adequate for mid-range speakers. Premium models often bundle Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well. You have to spend more for these features, but they'll reduce the need for expansion cards. Last but not least is SATA. You'll need one free SATA port for each optical or storage drive, so make sure your motherboard has enough for all of your drives, plus a couple extra for future upgrades. Also, if you do plan to use solid state drives, make sure the motherboard offers the latest SATA 6GB standard, also known as SATA 3.0. You should also give some consideration to peripheral connections like USB 3.0 and Thunderbolt. Most motherboards come with a perfectly adequate selection, but this detail can matter if you use a lot of external hard drives. Also keep in mind that any video outputs, if available, will not work in conjunction with video card outputs. You can use integrated graphics output from the motherboard or output from the video card, but not both at once. There are many extra features like expanded overclocking support, improved temperature monitoring, and ultra durable construction. Most of these aren't worth the money, but one feature we recommend you consider is active fan management. A motherboard that provides UEFI or software control fan speed can make your system quieter by reducing speeds when the system is at idle. While motherboard prices can reach into the stratosphere, you can snag one from a reputable brand like Asus or Gigabyte with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for around 150 bucks. Attractive high-end motherboards can be tempting, but you're probably better served spending your money on a quicker processor or better video card.
For more details, click the link in the description. Thanks for watching the video. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel.